Hi, I'm Kevin Kelly, and we are trying an experiment with a show and share to see if this works with our um, audience. And with me is Claudia and Camille. And um, we're going to um, show one thing and share one thing, or share one thing, I think. So we're going to try something out and see um, if it works. Let us know if you're watching this, if you do get to see it, um, what you think. So, should we say, um, I'm sorry, should we say that these are things that we're excited about or curious about that we don't necessarily know a lot about? Right. So maybe there's a difference between what we normally do with Recommendo, which is very, very personal recommendations that we, um, kind of endorse ourselves. Um, and Cool Tools, of course, also has that element of um, actual user experience in using the tool. I think here we're gonna allow ourselves to um, talk about things that we might not have any expertise in or even know about, but we just find interesting. Um, and we're kind of maybe sharing our enthusiasms rather than our recommendation. Well, I can go first then. Yes. Okay, Miss Enthusiastic, what do you have for us? <laughs> Let me, so mine involves sharing my screen because it is a website that I discovered. So let me share. And can you see it? Yes. This is the Library of Babel. And this is an art project made by a PhD student in, um, in comparative literature, I believe. And he's also a programmer, obviously, because he designed this whole website. And it's very overwhelming and kind of disorienting. Um, there's lots of places to start, but um, I guess I'll just begin under browse. This is based off of um, Jorge Luis's, Luis Borges essay on the Library of Babel. And he designed this library just as he described um, with hexagonal chambers, uh, four walls of bookcases, five shelves per wall, 32 volumes per shelf. And I, the idea is that all the books exist in this right. portal. It's an infinite library that has all possible books. Yes. That's the library of Babel. I think this website is still a, um, a work in progress because he doesn't have all the books possible. I, uh, he describes in the about page, it's, um, so I'm just gonna randomly choose a chamber, which takes me to, um, I can randomly pick a wall, pick this wall and pick a shelf then pick a book. And then I get this gibberish. Um, so my options are to Englishize it, which highlights all of the English words, uh, three or more letters that have three or more letters. And um, it'll tell me what the longest words on this page are. So you can explore it that way. You can also create bookmarks for the pages that you discover and return to it and share it. Right. Um, you can also, here's search, enter, some words and find them in a book. Uh, so I'll just write cool tools, show or share, search. And then I can find it on its own page, which I can bookmark and share or... Wait, wait, so... So, so here's where the confusion comes in. I don't know exactly what's happening. Um, in the about page, he says that these pages are not being created um, as you type them, that they they already exist. Yes. Uh, but so, oh, here. I mean, it's only lowercase letters, okay. Yeah. Um, so. He, here's what I like. There's different options. Here's, you can find it on a page with random words. Oh, it actually does show up. Wow, that's amazing. So this is obviously 
wait, like wait, a thought wait, so, experiment. Wait, wait. So, so you're you're saying that you're saying that he's actually generating this page based on it, or that actually those five words in that sequence do show up? Do exist. They've all they yes, and I'm just calling up the page where they exist, but I don't understand how it works. Obviously, he's a programmer. Um, so a lot of this is like not in my language. I don't know how he built this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really interesting. I mean, it's um, you know, let me let me go back to the portal. There's the theory behind it, the about page where you know he goes into Borges and why right. he created this. Um, he does say, okay, right here. We do not simply generate and store books as they are requested. In fact, the storage demands would make that impossible. Every possible permutation of letters is accessible at this very moment in one of the library's books, only awaiting its discovery. Yeah, okay. So they're generating that page from some random seed number. Yes, there's also a Reddit dedicated to this website for people to post their findings, like anything mm -hmm. strange or uh, that they find. So can you follow someone else's um, path or bookmark? Can you, can yes. you go to yes. a specific point in a specific book? So that was page 355 out of 410 in some specific volume. Can you create like a, a bibliography yeah. and, and you know, <laughs> particular illustrations? Yes, I believe so. Because he does say that everything that you discover and find, it's, uh, it exists in perpetuity. It'll always be there. So um, I can, sh I guess, find pages and share them with you. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. Fantastic. Um, so, I don't know what its use is or purpose, but I, it's cool. It's boring. Um, yeah, I, I might uh, I have to. So, so, so besides, I guess you could search for longer passages than just the five words, because in theory, even those should exist. Mm -hmm. um, if every book that's ever been written right. or exists, not, not, not ever been written but every possible book every possible um, yeah I can't tell if this is incredibly inspiring like like you could just dive into this and unearth beautiful poetry and insights or if it makes me feel really sad about creativity. <laughs> that, I think that, both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's both. I, I like the random pages with all the other English words because that reminds me, that's kind of like bibliomancy, like when you're divining from like book passages, mm -hmm. you could just look for other words that stand out for you if you're searching for something. Mm -hmm. But also the programming that's involved with this or the fact that every all these possibilities exist kind of make me it makes me feel small and I like and because I don't understand it <laughs> um so I mean it's a yeah I don't know where it's going right now I mean it's not finished obviously or if this is something is going to keep working on um the present it contains all possible pages of 3200 characters so 3,200 characters is not very many words. It's more like right. a story than a book. If completed, it would contain every possible combination of a million, 312,000 But I'm, I'm saying the, the length, 3,200, yeah. that's maybe not even, that's 600 words? Is that right? <sighs> I don't know. So that's, that's um, the the set that they're drawing upon, right? It's all possible the pages. Length. All possible pages of three thousand two hundred characters long. So three thousand two hundred characters. This takes six words. I don't know what the average is. Six characters per word. But 
that would be six into yeah it's about 600 characters 600 words which is not really a book <clears throat> but it's a short story is that not a number on a page? Is that not a count of the, the, the number of characters on a single page within the 10 to 4,670? Yeah, I think he means right. books. Where he says, at present, it contains all possible pages of 600 words. And... I don't know if that math is correct. The math is... Yeah above me so and i think he's considering every page a book doesn't say how many pages in a book there's a there's a lot more behind a lot of yeah, yeah the theory behind this but i'm, okay. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment all right okay so um claudia what else do you have that's all i have okay <laughs> that's all. you're going to share something okay. so um Camille, do you want to show yeah. or share something? Yeah, I have um, a show and a, a share. Um, and can I also say that I, I'm i intrigued now by, about this idea of bibliomancy. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to have to try to remember to go back to that because yeah. that sounds very interesting. Um, so thank you for that share. Um, I... Uh, I'll start with a share. And my share is um, uh, just that I, I want to tell you that I um, have been using the app Marco Polo to get to know a family member who just came into my life um, in the last couple of years, um, a family member that I didn't know about, a close relation. And uh, this person, um, we've like been in contact by um, email. We've been connected on um, Facebook and on Instagram a little bit. And so um, we've done a bit of like writing back and forth and we've done some kind of like family genealogy uh, uh, together, comparing notes. And um, they invited me to Marco Polo as a way to just kind of get to know each other in a more casual, ordinary, mundane uh, sort of way. Our previous interactions have really been focused around like, well, how, like, how again are we related and, and kind of sharing about our, um, yeah. And, and Marco- I don't, know, I don't know what Marco Polo is. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so Marco Polo is an app for um, sending back and forth uh, short videos. So um, uh, they don't like expire. You kind of create a, I don't know if there's like a cap on how many videos you can send back and forth, but the idea is that it's kind of like um, FaceTime, but asynchronous. So you just say what you'd like to say. We're just kind of giving updates on what's happening on, in our lives on a particular day. Um, and then when you have a video waiting for you, um, you get a little push notification. You can watch it right away. You can watch it the next day. Um, and then when you're able, you record a response and, and send it back uh, to that person. Um, uh, and that's the extent of what I know about it. It's been around. Um, for a handful of years, but I've um, uh, never used it before. And it's now been like maybe three or four days that um, my family member and I have been trading messages back and forth, but it's just uh, delightful. Um, uh, and it kind of takes the pressure off of a, a live um, conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's Line. Do you know about Line? That, no. That's, that's what um, it's a social media thing that people in Taiwan, Japan mm -hmm. Korea seem to use, and, and Jamin uses. It has a, I think, that function of the um, sending the video, video memo, whatever. Yeah. 
I um I recommended Marco Polo and Recommendo I think like two or three years ago when they first started. Oh, you and did. I was I'm so sorry to know that. Oh no, 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 I was really excited about it too, and I think I used especially at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, but I had thank you for reminding me because I haven't used it in a really long time, and I think my friends and family kind of weaned off of it, and so if nobody else is using it, then. There. But I do like that you can create a stream of videos and they're saved there, these short little clips and messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be curious to know if your videos from a long time ago are still available to you, or I guess I can look up if they ever expire because I could see that being like something that maybe you'd eventually, it's free. I didn't, I didn't pay anything for yeah. it, um, but uh, storing videos for a long period of time. Um, I'll check resources. because a lot of those videos are from my like nieces. So it'd be cute to see what they looked like, like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. So. Marco Polo. Um, okay. And that's on probably the IS and Android. Uh, I assume so. I'm okay. using it on iOS, um, but I think given that it's been around for a handful of years, it's probably available on most most devices. So you have something to- Oh, I do. I have a thing also right here with me actually. Um, right, so Halloween was last uh -huh. Sunday and um, I got this, uh, pumpkin master carving knife. I'm just going to take the knife out and show you. Actually, both of these things were so good. They're just like the, the, the cheapest things. I picked these up maybe like uh, over a year ago, maybe after last Halloween. Um, uh, and I was really skeptical that I would be able to do much with this um, knife, but it's sold as a, as a, like something your kids can use to um, carve um, pumpkins. It's not too uh, stabby, <laughs> but it's very effective um, in getting through the pumpkin and it uh, flexes. I don't know if you can see how it flexes. So you can really like um, do nice curves. And I um, took it out of the bin of like, Halloween stuff that I'd just been holding on to for a really long time. I was skeptical that it was going to be worthwhile. And it was far and away the, the just like the best thing I've ever used for. It. So, so I'm kids, sorry. So your kids could use it as well as you. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. And it was very effective. So um, these have been around for a while. It's new to me. I was skeptical. I was skeptical that it would be worth the like mm -hmm. $10 or whatever that it was. But right. Easily, easily was. Right. Okay. Did you guys okay. carve any pumpkins? We did nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> it was like, I don't know. I just didn't feel like um, our neighborhood had uh, the beginnings of the return to the decoration. Yeah. A lot of people drive from other parts of our city to come here to trick or treat in the past because it's a walking pedestrian neighborhood. So the kids can kind of walk around. Mm -hmm. They always drive in um, that car evaporated the last two years, but I think it'll be back next year and we'll do something more substantial, appropriate. So I have I have um, something I wanted to show. Um, so I've been um, really kind of getting into the elements. So I've been collecting actual elements. Oh, very cool. I don't want to tip it up too much, but um, these are a lot of the stable elements and these are pure elements and they are in little tiny one centimeter squares, all exactly the same size. And they have engraved on them the, uh, it says Fe, S iron, and then the um, atomic number and where they go. And um, um, it's like, I was astounded at what I did not know. I mean, there are these elements that are very common, whose names I didn't even recognize as an element. And it's like, here they are. Um, and like, element Y. What is that? 
it is um, yttrium. And it's 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 number thirty nine, I think. And um, and so, how are you learning more about them? Do they come with? Well, I have a book. I have a book. I have a book of elements I'm going through. Um, but it, it's also you know the table, the periodic table itself is an amazing thing because you can kind of see, like right in the center. Most of these are kind of gray metals, but right here, there are these little colorful ones. Here is copper and then there's silver and gold and they're just in a row they're a little and heavier do, do some of the elements cost more than the yes others? some of them okay. cost a lot more yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um here's one that is called osmium osmium number 76 is down in this row same row that gold is in. It is the densest material. You know that lead, that tungsten ball I have? Mm -hmm. This is denser than that, almost twice as dense. It is so amazingly heavy for this <laughs> thing. And then we have this one up here, boron, one of the, one of the lightest, you know, it's, it's, it's right next to carbon. It also looks like carbon, but it is very, very light. It's almost like weighs nothing. And so, I don't know, I just find it amazing that we have um, these elements that make up stuff that I didn't even know about. And um, each one has a story in them. So I'm collecting them and holding them so that like, you can actually see, um, this one is not holdable because it's mercury. So it's in a little case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, mercury is right next, which I didn't know, which is right next to gold. And they're next to each other because they because, share well, some yeah, Because they share um, a weight. Um, they're, 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 they're like one proton difference. They're going this way. Oh, that's so interesting. And they come this way here too. So most of these are gases. Um, here, this is pure uranium. Okay, so the so white are gases, are they, do you actually have, I have filled I have, with the gas or? Yeah, I have some, I have some, like, I don't have a lot of gases right now because they're usually clear and you can't see much, but I have a few others in glass ampoules, including ones that are toxic uh, and ones that are, um, ones that will mostly the ones that will um oxidize so they so um much faster than say iron some of these oxidize almost immediately so they keep them in a ample to protect them uh, not that they're actually toxic but some are toxic as well um so this one too is another one that's in a plastic case because this is gallium gallium which is used in making um chips but the problem is that it will melt in your hand mm. oh, wow. the, the melting point is low enough that your body temperature will melt it and it'll be like mercury um so yeah it's i just i don't know to me it's like discovering this other world of um again um here uh, elements I didn't even know this one is called um it's so small I can't it's um samarium sm hmm. samarium. who ever heard of samarium it's like what it's like that's crazy yeah this is like, great so can you get a full set or are you slowly growing your collection I can get a, f a full set but what happens is that some of these rare earth metals are so rare in their pure form that they're insanely expensive. Yeah. Um, like th this one here, I have one here where the total amount of 
that's that's mined or manufactured in the world on the planet is like just like a cubic meter it's like like yeah. this is like a significant portion yeah it's of, effectively on obtainium right yeah of this is <laughs> portion of the amount that's mined that year in this little cube and so um so they can get very expensive so and then a lot of these are kind of um just in get like gas form or these down here are basically radioactive they're not stable uranium actually is stable but some of the other ones well th these are not but these down here are all not very stable yeah so i could see in a sense it's very cool to see them all together the ones that you have yeah and also very interesting to see which ones you cannot have or don't or don't yet have right. exactly um, it reveals yes. this the scarcity or the right. the um the risk or danger right uh, and and you know close up you can actually see the, the differences in the colors and then you can feel the differences in the weight and the the textures um so for me this is the story of this is what our world is made out of and a lot of these things are used in making chips or alloys and um, here's, you know, um, neo, um, neobium, neo, neobium, which I've never heard of, which, um, you know, it's, it's 41. It's right in the middle of it next to chromium and titanium. And it's like, it's next to millennium, which is used in making steels, but, but it's a kind of like a, I don't know what I can say. It's like an essential ingredient in making our modern world. And it's a element that I never even heard of before. So this cool. is what I'm doing and being introduced to our, our world. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Here's a, I'll give, give you an example of the, um, here's a glass ample that has iodine in it. Mm -hmm. Iodine sublimates at room temperature, mm. um, meaning that it's it just changes into a gas directly from a solid to a gas at room temperature. Mm. Who is producing? Who is uh, producing? Well, there, there, there's an outfit that, that's actually manufacturing these little cubes uh -huh. is very very difficult because while they're trying to machine it, it's it's evaporizing uh making toxic iodine gas and stuff so yeah so so these so getting in the skew form there's there's one outfit that does that does this um you can find some of the raw forms of it which are a little easier but actually trying to manufacture an exact one one centimeter cube is is a tough thing but these are the kind of ampules that um some of the elements are not stable in, in their pure form Okay, but that does not fit into the um, yeah the display. Yeah, I was I say you guys need to make a square one that would fit into. <laughs> yeah, or put a pet like a hole if they just it's a yeah. sheet of acrylic, yeah, right? Right, right, right? So right. Could, they could just put a hole so that you could slide in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. right now it doesn't do that. <laughs> so that's the elements. There's a book called The Elements by Theodore Gray. That has stories about them that, that was inspiration for it originally. I was like, I've been reading it. It's like, what do these look like? He made a periodic table table. Mm. Built a table that had the periodic table in it. So that was sort of the inspiration. So that's cool. what I have for today. Um, um, I think we'll call it quits for today in this trial. Mm -hmm. I hope anybody watching enjoys it let us know what you think and we'll do more of them bye bye, bye.